I just want to look at uh, the book of Revelation chapter 13 for a moment. Because the book of Revelation, it is the book that tells us of things to come. So in the end times, there will be a man that we call the Antichrist. And he will, apparently, because uh, Antichrist means he's an imitation, he's a false Christ. So uh, whether he claims to be Jesus or not, uh, he's going to claim to be Israel's Messiah. He's going to be accepted by all religions. And he will usher in what the scripture tells us uh, is a one world government, a one world religion, and a one world economic system with the mark of the beast, 666. Where if somebody does not have the mark of the beast, they will not be able to buy or sell. I think what we've seen just over the past few years, it's pretty obvious if you look at the World Economic Forum and what they're doing in Davos, Switzerland, and just the way the world is going. Clearly there are people alive right now who are working towards this, whatever you want to call it, whether you call it the New World Order, it doesn't matter what you call it. There are people who want a one world government. And the United States is being weakened. You know, the United States, after World War uh, II, it was the two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union collapsed. Now there's only one superpower. Well, if we just weaken the United States and kind of bring the U.S. down to a level, even things out, that's what they want. Because they're working toward Now, whether they accomplish it or not, I don't know. Somebody will. Uh, in the Again, in the end times, the Antichrist will accomplish what many people have tried to accomplish, going all the way back to Nimrod with the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11. But Revelation chapter 13 tells us about this one world government, one world religion, and one world economic system. It says, I stood on the sand of the sea. This is the Apostle John writing. He said, I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. And basically, this is the beast of Revelation, the man we identify as the Antichrist. He'll go on to talk about another beast uh, out of, uh, from the land, who is the false prophet. And then he mentions the dragon. So just as there's the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have the satanic trinity of the dragon, which is Satan, uh, the Antichrist, and his false prophet. Revelation 13 verse 4 says, So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Verse 5 and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority, listen to this, authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. So the Antichrist will, this falls into the will of God. This is the plan of God, just like Abimelech. God raised Abimelech up just so he could tear him down. God raised up Pharaoh that he might show his power in him. God is going to allow the Antichrist to be raised up. And the Lord is going to tear him down at the second coming. But the point is the Antichrist is given authority over every tribe, tongue, and nation. That is a one world government. And all the people of the world, it says, will worship him. That is a one world religion. So this is the common attitude that people have that every religion is equal. There are many paths to God. So whether you're Catholic, Protestant, Evangelical, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, Muslim, Buddhist, doesn't matter. We're all just going to end up in the same place. We're all, we're all, you know, it, it's the, 
illustration of the mountain. God is on top of the mountain, and we all have different paths up the mountain, but it all leads to the same place. It all leads to the top. All roads lead to heaven. The majority of people out there, they think this way. Even though Jesus himself said in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. And evangelical Christianity is filled with false teachers who say, well, yes, that's what Jesus said and just means that he is, he's the way. Like, he's our way, but other people, they have their way. No, that's not what it says. Peter said in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, that there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So those religions, and let's face it, there are fundamentalists in, you know, uh, every religion that believe that, hey, our religion is the truth, our way is the right way. And even though the term fundamentalist is kind of a bad word in the eyes of many people, and yeah, there, there are some fundamentalist groups that, yeah, that's, I, I would not want to go over to a foreign country and be uh, in the middle of a bunch of uh, whatever fundamentalists. Uh, I, I, I'm going to stay right here where I am. Uh, but, you know, a Christian fundamentalist, Again, there's negative connotations associated with that word. But if you believe in the fundamentals of the faith, if you believe that the Bible is the word of God and you believe it's true and you believe that Jesus died and rose again and that when he said he's the way, the truth and the life, that he actually meant it. And when the Bible says you shall worship God and God alone, that it actually means that. See, that type of thing is, you'll, you will be criticized for believing that way. For believing that Jesus is the only way to God, that is not permitted in our ecumenical or interfaith culture. So, I, when I did this video about Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, like, this is not Christianity. It's not true. Um, yeah, you, there are some people online that were upset about that. And why? Because they think every religion is equally valid. Many different paths to God. So uh, we are going to be studying different, again, cults in the occult. Uh, tonight we're going to look at Mormonism. Mormonism is not even close to Christianity, uh, even though it's being accepted as such. Uh, the Pope is in interfaith dialogue with some uh, Mormon leaders. The most popular show, uh, the most popular trend in evangelical Christianity right now is a program, TV program called The Chosen. I've watched the first two seasons. You know, I thought it was okay. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me as, you know, well, that's definitely wrong. Although they take extreme uh, artistic license and have Jesus saying things that he never said and doing things he never did, which I think is problematic. But, you know, I'm, I didn't watch the show. And if you like the show, if you watch the show and you like it, I'm not against you. Don't get me wrong. But the point of bringing it up is that it's being funded by the Mormon church. And there's Mormon people involved in, you know, the actors, the producers, and the founder of the, of the show, a man named Dallas Jenkins, who is the son of Jerry Jenkins, who's the author of the Left Behind novels. So a lot of people would, oh, that, oh, that's Dallas Jenkins? Oh, that's Jerry Jenkins' son? Oh, he must be, he must be solid. Well, no, Dallas Jenkins is saying that Mormons are brothers and sisters in Christ. Dallas Jenkins is saying that Mormons love the same Jesus that we do, and nothing could be further from the truth. Do you realize that the God of Mormonism According to the LDS Church, the God of Mormonism was once a sinful human being living on a, another planet named Kolob. And he, through the rites and rituals of Mormonism, became a God. So the God of Mormonism was once a sinful human being living on the planet Kolob. And they believe that Mormon men today can become gods of their own planet someday. 
Therefore, the Jesus of Mormonism is the spirit son of this glorified man and who they call Heavenly Father. We call him the Heavenly Father. They just call him Heavenly Father. And he had relations with Heavenly Mother and produced a spirit child, Jesus. And Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. That's the Mormon God and that's the Mormon Jesus. It's not the same God. You know, the Apostle Paul warned in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 about those who preach another Jesus. So, you know, the, the chosen is being accepted. Dallas Jenkins is being accepted as just, yeah, he's a, he's a trendy figure in evangelical Christianity, and yet he is accepting Mormonism as, yeah, there are brothers and sisters in Christ. My friend, they, Mormons believe that the Bible has been corrupted. That's why they have their own holy book, the Book of Mormon. So the truth is being attacked on every level. Every step of the way, the truth is being attacked. That's why it is more it is important now, more important now, that we know the truth. Jesus said the truth will set you free. And once we know the truth, we have the truth, we can share the truth with other people. Uh, we are living, the Apostle Paul talked about, how in the last days, perilous times would come. So when you have evangelicals saying that there are many paths to God and you know, Mormonism is just another, another religion, and yeah, their path to God is legitimate too. And you know, and maybe just, maybe just everybody's saved. Maybe maybe there is no hell. Maybe everyone's gonna. Wouldn't isn't that what the devil would want people to believe? Maybe you're an atheist and an agnostic, or maybe you're this. Maybe you're that. Everything's gonna be fine. Don't worry. As people are on the road to destruction, isn't that? Wouldn't that be the greatest trick of the devil to just convince everybody that everything's fine, every religion is fine, it's all leading to the same place, no matter who you are, what you believe, it's going to work out in the end. Um, yeah, we are not ignorant of his devices. This is what the devil wants people to believe. There's only one Jesus, and that's the Jesus of Scripture. The Jesus who died on the cross and rose again. The Jesus who, in the Gospels, calls men to repent. Why? Because the kingdom is at hand. Why was the kingdom at hand? Because the king was at hand.